So Clint, uh, obviously a very good 92 point victory today, what were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, we uh, we come into this weekend thinking it was a bit of a danger game. The boys were a bit flat during the week. They've been up for a few weeks and uh, Windy was uh, absent uh, for the majority of the week. And uh, it was definitely a danger game, but you know we seemed to control most of the play pretty well and capitalise on the scoreboard. Our first quarter was pretty ordinary though. We made a lot of fundamental mistakes, sort of kept them in the game, but we sort of still had control of it, so it wasn't that much of a worry, but yeah, we really good after half time. So you're saying that your first quarter was sluggish, were you at all surprised by the way that the Tigers came out? No, like I said, I think we, we took it as a danger game. Uh, they got a lot of really good kids in their side from the Mariners program. Had them all back this week and definitely saw it as a danger game and I think they would have set their sights on us given they pushed us last time. We were first quarter was mainly our mistakes that were really hurting us and we, we seemed to fix that after half time well and able to capitalise on the scoreboard. And so you kicked twenty goals twenty two today. Is that uh, an issue moving forward in regards to inaccuracy and how do you address that? I think it just comes down to our skill level over the whole game. You know, early on we were kick out missing targets, our handballs were missing targets, and then obviously that flowed on to having shots on goal. But we kicked a lot of good goals in the second half, and that's something to build on. But no, look, we need percentage, and it's going to be tight at the end of the year. So we that, that may hurt us come come finals time. And obviously, Thor Boscott was outstanding today. Uh, uh, he kicked nine goals. Is he the best player in the competition? Well, I don't know if he's the best player in the competition. He's certainly one of them. I'd have Jake Cox in my team any day of the week. But um, look, Thor's up there because he's got so many strings to his bow. He can play half back. He can play on ball. He can go forward, and he's really hard to match up on because he's powerful. He's explosive, and he can do the miraculous thing more often than not. So yeah, he's a great asset to our side. And Ryan Wiggins shifted forward again today. How did you see his uh, performance? Yeah, look, Kingston had a few matchups that we were probably struggling with, and we just thought we'd change it up a bit and put we go forward again and. Um, look, we gave loves playing forward. He got excited when I told him at half time and put a big smile on his face. And he responded well. He was attacking the ball well, took a few good marks and finished well. And that's good for Wigo because it means now in tough games we can shift him back and shift him forward and he can adjust to both positions. And so you've got Devonport at home next week. They didn't get the result against Hobart City today. But how do you address them moving forward, especially because uh, Mitch Thorpe is playing some good football? Yeah, look, Mitch is uh, obviously an ex AFL draftee, so he's certainly one you have to try and shut down. Um, you know, Lexi, Alex Hill usually gets the job on him, but I'm not sure how bad his hamstring pulled up. But um, yeah, look, we'll have somebody else that we can play on Mitch, but. I think it comes back to our midfield. I think our midfield's the best in the in the competition at the moment, and if they get going in there, we're very hard to stop. So Aaron, obviously a tough day, no two point loss. Any positives you can take out of that result? Yeah, and probably not have a lot. I thought the first half was pretty was was all right. We're down by twenty three, I think it was points at half time. So we really matched it with them for the half, but. Goes to show you to play four quarters of footy and getting beaten by 70 points and a half second half of footy is just, just not good enough. And obviously Daniel Archer was allowed out, what was the issue there? Yeah, look, Daniel uh, hurt his knee on Thursday night at uh, training, so uh, he's had an MRI, he's uh, a little bit better today, so hopefully the results come back a bit positive, but yeah, definitely a huge out. We're looking forward to having him and Hugh Dixon uh, up forward today to see what they could work tandemly together, but uh, obviously didn't get that opportunity to see them, so hopefully, hopefully it's something minor. Yeah, so, and just on that knee injury, you said it was minor, but did it look or appear to be of a serious nature? Uh, without being a doctor, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was sore, but, um, yeah, like he was walking around fine today and no real pain, so it's, yeah, it's just about making sure everything's structural right within the knee, so. And you mentioned uh, Hugh Dixon, he kicked a couple of goals today. How did you see his performance? Yeah, look, we probably didn't use him really well. Our, our disposal today, I thought uh, Lord Adele did a good job of, of capitalising on our turnovers. Um, yeah, our, our foot use today was, was pretty pretty poor, to be honest. Um, so I feel for some of our forwards, the way we delivered. But yeah, Hugh shows, he does, he shows a bit. He's, he's got an, an immense talent uh, and he'll be a very good player. Uh, either whether it be in the TSL or you know, real high hopes that he gets drafted at the end of the year. And uh, Lockie Watt played his 50th game today. How did you see his performance today and his progression to his point? Oh, look, he's had a, he's had a, Lockie Watt's had a fantastic year. He's probably a little bit down today, as were most of our midfield. I thought we got beaten quite ha comprehensively in the midfield, just mainly through their run, uh, their willingness to run to contest to contest, and uh, our ability to win the footy was a lot better than ours. Uh, but Lockie Watt's had a, had a really great, probably his breakout year this year. Um, and just become one of the senior members of, the, of our team this year. And uh, do you believe that Lauderdale are the benchmark side of the competition? Oh look, we've played them a couple of times now. This is 
definitely the, given they've got a couple out as well, I think uh, I think their midfield's really strong and, and Thor Boss got his ability to play on the ball and obviously be up forward today. Like I wrist, uh, we just didn't seem to have anybody that, could, that had the willingness to go with him uh, and McManus on the wing I thought was really damaging for them as well. But look, I think uh, I think Lenorke topped Clarence today, which just throws, throws things up even more. Uh, but I, I look... I still think it's. I think still think it's a contest between four sides. To be honest, um, I think Lonnie might be off the pace a little bit, but you know they they have probably got the list to do it when they want to. But I think between between Glenorchy, uh, Clarence, North Lonnie, and uh, Lauderdale, I think you, know, you could throw all magnets up in the air and see which one lands up. And so if they keep all that form, then yeah, they'll, they'll be uh, definitely a chance of winning it. And so you've got Launceston up at Windsor Park next week. How do you prepare for that match? Oh look, we'll review the film on Monday. I mean we've. Uh, We've, we've got we've got a lot of blokes playing some really good footy in the twos and uh, some young blokes and we'll probably look at if, if we're going to lose by 90 points then we might as well give our young blokes uh, a few even though we're already young but a few more of our young blokes the opportunity uh, to play senior footy and uh, try and get something ready going for next year. Uh, I don't think it's a question of ability. I think uh, if you look at our side we've got we have got the ability. It was just our our will and our want today to to want to run with Lauderdale and I just don't think we had that today.